In this video, we're going to complete example one. It says the following table and graph represent a sample of eight students. Each student recorded the number of hours they studied for an exam, which we can see on the horizontal axis, as well as their marks, which we can see on the vertical axis. This example was actually taken from a previous lesson and we've actually omitted some values and we've done this for a reason we've done it so that you can see the problems that we face when we use extrapolation so here on our table we can see that a student that did zero hours of study got a mark of five percent on their test and we have other students for instance this one did 10 hours of study and got a high mark of 85 percent when we look at the scatter plot we can see that Generally, when a student puts in more hours of study, the exam mark seems to go up. So question A says, use the following website to find the equation for the least squares line of best fit. And I'll bring this down so you can see the website there that you need to go to. There are other websites that you can find that will do this anyway. It doesn't have to be the exact same website. The reason we're using a website in this particular example is just to save time. You need to know how to make a least squares line of best fit using a calculator and we've shown you how to do that in previous lessons. But to save time in this lesson we're just going to use a website. And websites like this can come in handy particularly when you're doing an assignment on Ivariate data. Let's have a look at the website. It says enter your data as XY pairs and then it will find the equation of the line for you. So what do they mean by XY pairs? Well, it basically means enter your data one column at a time. So if I wanted to enter the zero and the five, I would enter it as an XY pair zero comma five. And then for the next column, it would be five comma 80 and so on. So I'm gonna enter those values into the website I'm going to go brackets and then 0 comma 5 whoops 5 then a space brackets again 5 comma 80 All right, so I'm going to pause and finish this off I would like you to do it along with me all right so I've entered these values into the website and it's given me the equation I can see here y equals 8.384x plus 8.764. Now I would like to change this equation slightly. I don't want to have y and x. I want to pick something else. Remembering that x comes from the top row and y comes from the bottom row. So I think I should change x to h for the amount of study time. And I think I'll change my y to be maybe M for mark, capital M will write that. So then I get M for mark equals 8.384H plus 8.764. So we'll take this equation. I imagine we're going to use this in the next question. And we'll now move on to question B. Question B wants us to draw the least squares line of best fit on the scatter plot at right. And the best way to do that is just to plot two points and draw a line that connects these two points. And we'll take our two points from study times of zero hours and 10 hours, because we want two points that are quite far apart. So I've just drawn up a small table of values using the zero and the 10. And we're going to substitute our zero and 10 into our equation above. And we're just going to do it by plugging it straight into the calculator. The equation starts with 8.384 times h, which is 0 in this case, so times 0 plus 8.764. And this comes out to 8.764. Now I'm just going to round this to 9. And the reason I'm doing that is whenever you're plotting points on a graph, there's no point having decimals because we're not that accurate when we draw graphs. So let's do the next point when h is 10. 
So we follow the equation 8.384, 8.384 times an H value of 10 plus 8.764. And let's round this to 93. All right, so we've got our two points. We'll start with the point 0, 09. If we were to plot that, it would go just under the 10 there. And next, the point 10, 93. If we were to plot that, it would go slightly above the 90. And now we just need to connect these two points with a straight line. Excellent. And, and you want to look at it and just think to yourself, does it look like a decent line of best fit? And it does. All right, moving on to question C now. I've just copied across this line of best fit and also our equation. It says, by referring to the least squares line of best fit, what exam mark would you expect to get if you studied for six hours? And all we need to do is go to the six and make our way to our line of best fit, work our way across, and we can see that we would get a mark of about 60%. All right. And for those who might not realize, this is an example of interpolation. The reason this is an example of interpolation is because this study time of six hours lies within the data set. We can see our points here range between study times of 0 to 10. So anything between 0 and 10 is an example of interpolation. And we can also see that our line of best fit, which ranges between 0 and 10, exists at this point where our study time is 6 hours. Let's now move on to question D. This time it wants us to use the equation that we got from part A to calculate the expected exam mark for someone who studied for 18 hours. So we're going all the way over here to the right at 18 hours. So if we're going to substitute that into our equation, which we can see at the top here, we would go 8.384 times the number of hours, which is 18, plus 8.764. Let's bring up our calculator. 8.384 times 18 plus 8.764. And that comes out to, if we round it to a whole number, 160. So we get a mark of 160%. And we can see that that's a problem because you can't get a mark more than 100%. Now, why did that happen? Well, if we look at where we've done 18 hours of study and we take our line of best fit and extend it, you can see it's going to go well above the 100% mark. So this must be up around 160%. And this is where we start getting problems when we try to use extrapolation. In fact, we're asked to talk about this in question E. In question E, it refers to question D, the one we did previously, saying it's an example of extrapolation. It wants us to explain, in our own words, why extrapolation can sometimes be misleading or inaccurate. Now, you might remember earlier we mentioned that extrapolation involves looking at things outside the data set. So what are we talking about when we say inside the data set? We're basically talking about the points that we have here. The points range between study hours of 0 to 10. We don't actually know what the points would look like beyond the 10 mark. And you might remember that I mentioned that this is an example I did from a previous lesson and that I've omitted some of these values. So if I draw down the points that should have been there, and I can't remember exactly where, where they were, but they looked something like this. And what we noticed is they kind of plateaued out. So it started by going up and then plateaued out at the end. Now, if I was to draw a line of best fit now, it would actually be more of a non-linear line of best fit. It would look something like what I've drawn here, 
Whereas when I drew a least squares line of best fit, it was linear. Now this was fine for study times between 0 and 10 because we can see that the nonlinear line and the linear line are quite close together. But when I go beyond this, when I extrapolate, you'll see that the lines there further and further apart from each other. And we can see that extrapolation is not going to give us the result we want beyond the study time of 10 hours. So what are we going to write for our response to question E? Well, we'll just write that extrapolation works fine in situations where the data trend is always linear. But in situations where it is not linear, extrapolation won't work. Anyway, that concludes our video on example one. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.